Welcome back to Let's Play Spyro the Dragon Reignited. I'm Burning Dog Face, and I'm standing right here because I wanted to demonstrate that last time, right at the end, I was pretty sure I figured out that continuing your momentum on that platform over there can be important somehow. At least I think it was that one. Yeah, it looks like it was that one. I don't know how it's important. Why I would need to do a super jump off of, uh, that one. Other than it's, you know, chaining them together. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I could give it a shot. Wasn't there a chicken here? I need a chicken. No. I guess that's the next one. Yeah, I can see it running around over there. Huh. Achievement unlocked. Launch date. Jump off every supercharge ramp in treetops. Huh. Well, that's not a, uh... Oh, wow. I've only count. Uh, I only know where one of those is, not including the, uh... Oh, there's another! Mm, there's two more perfects, apparently, and three, since I missed the one at the bottom for Nasty Nork himself! Ooh, they do not, uh, make light asks, do they? Off you go, then. I was almost high enough to go over that, so that feels like I'm onto something. Alright, no way back, fine. I learned a thing that felt important the other day. About this game. Ooh. And that was, uh. Well, I assumed when I heard about this whole unified control scheme thing that they were going for, uh, I just assumed that they would be making small additions to all three games to sort of homogenize them together, with the end result being that none of them will actually feel exactly like they did originally. Yeah, I know where this is. This is the wrong spot for me. But, uh, apparently... Uh, two and three already used a very similar physics system. So they just sort of slapped that into the first one. And the reason I mention this, the reason this is notable, is that it actually changes a couple of things in very minor ways from the original. One of the things it changes is gliding. You drop faster than you did in the original Spyro the Dragon. I don't believe it breaks any of the challenges in the game, but I do believe that it uh, does mean that every single glide they ask you to do in the first game is now very slightly harder than it used to be. So that makes me feel better about myself, having trouble with the gliding. That's not a supercharged ramp, is it? No, that's just a ramp ramp. God damn it. Incidentally, one of the other things they changed, although I don't know the exact details of this one, was a, uh, was the supercharge jumps. You know, it's funny, because, uh, I actually remember some complaints about the Crash Bandicoot uh, remake trilogy for pretty much exactly the same thing, tweaking the, uh, the physics and making it harder than the original game. Hmm. 
I have no idea how to build up that kind of momentum. All right, enough of this. Let's go punch Metalhead right in his face. I am of two minds about this game, you guys. Some people encouraging me to try to go for all of it. Get the perfect uh, run of Spyro the Dragon. And some people are encouraging me not to worry about it and to focus on the things that actually matter, like rescuing dragons and eggs. I mean, I suppose once we take out Nasty Nork, it's just a matter of time before we round up all those gems anyway, but, uh... Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what to do yet. But for now, I do know that I need to beat the shit out of this boss. Let's go do that. I'm thinking he's a robot, but given the logical sense of the previous bosses, I'm going to guess that it's a ballerina wearing a fursuit head. Oh, I like those. Almost looks like the leaves are growing on the tree, not out of it. Weird. But no tree is just a big block of wood, then it wouldn't have any way to get water inside of it. Not water, uh, the sunlight. Well, that was unpleasant. Hate. There goes perfect already. I also discovered that uh, that move right there, the, the the dodge rolls. So I kind of assumed that was one of those things. Oh, they only added that in the second game, but uh, they put it in the first one to like make all three of them the same. I actually had that backwards. They only put the dodge roll in the first game, and they took it out for two and three. And what I was told is that they did that because the dodge roll is kind of useless. Like, specifically, what, uh, the, the wording was something like, the only time a dodge roll is, uh, specifically the best action you can take is when you're facing those, uh... Oh, right off the edge, huh? Is when you're facing those body-slamming, uh, sheepdogs in... Oh, hey, this is it level weird is when you're facing the body slamming sheepdogs on the toasty level and it's funny because when I was actually doing that level for the first time I thought to myself jeez this move they added breaks this uh, encounter all right that was what we in the business call bullshit I will admit that doing that kind of feels like a video game version of a no-sell. Just, eh. I don't actually care enough to stop you, so I'm just going to move out of your way. Very slightly. Oh, come on. And the projectile attack? Really? Aha, dragon. I guess, just the one, right? Sadiki! Metalhead is all charged up to meet you. Attacking the power pole should disrupt his power supply. You know, there's no rule that says you have to leave and, you know, not help me. I'm just saying. It's an option. How do I get him to those, he said, coveting the shiny goods. Actually, how do I even get onto this one? This one seems more reasonable, but, uh... No, I didn't think I'd be able to step on the light, amazingly, given that that was almost certainly a flat texture in the original game. All right, all right. Well, I'll be damned! It's a robot! 
for once the name actually makes complete sense. Seems like it. Oh, and he's nuclear powered. Awesome. Yeah, that's definitely something I want to break. Oh, nice. I do like the ambience. Mad science is always a fun place uh, to tool around with. There you are, you beep boop. I don't know what drew total blank. <laughs> What's this about? Okay, but why do I want to go behind Metalhead? And here we can see where the Mountain Dew is harvested. So I'm guessing I can't get the key anymore because it was behind that big door that closed. Oh, I can't get around that way, huh? I didn't notice that before. Oh, uh, hi. Nice arm cannon, I guess. He's conveniently moving into position. But did he just do the thing when I get closer, or...? Oh, dear. What if I just stand right here? Thank you! Well, thank you, actually. Okay, granted, that was a pretty cool attack. I'm sorry? Oh! I had perfect health and I confronted the boss and I have perfect health now! Wow, they have a really generous uh, interpretation of perfect. Wow, I must have misinterpreted that comment. It's not, you know... I, I thought I read it as, you don't need to kill everyone, you just need to kill, uh... Uh, Dr. Shemp before you get hit. But no, like, it might just be that you beat him with full health! Granted, this is the first boss level I've encountered with health in it, I believe. What about this particular hallway is causing a, uh, a frame rate drop? Maybe it's these boards that the frame rate beast doesn't like. Won't be all of them, of course, because I missed a bunch at the beginning. I just barely made that. Actually, yeah, I was given a specific example. Uh, Peacekeepers, the uh, level with the... the what do you call it? Oh, that's a passageway. Yeah, Peacekeepers, the level where uh, you find the, the dragon on top of the building, and Spyro goes, Hey, what's across the river? And the guy goes... Find out for yourself! Just glide there! If I had to guess, I would say that last gem there was uh, a monkey that spontaneously died when I killed the boss.
But yeah, I was told that uh, getting across the river is meant to be really easy, whereas in that, when I played that, you know, in the Reignited trilogy, I climbed up to the very top of the building instead of just gliding from right next to the guy, and I still barely made it to the other side. Okay, I can't go back there. That's nice. Alright, but how the butts do I get up there? Uh, I don't think there's a way up there to the top of the wall, though that would be clever. So yeah, I just heard that generic cartoon door opening sound effect, and for, like, half a second, my brain made the connection to, what was it, ICQ that used to use that noise? Shit. Huh. Why'd there be a platform down there? And why is the portcullis only covering half that door? I don't want to jump in that, you guys. I'm pretty sure that will kill me, so I don't think I need to run in there, but... Is that some secret bullshit? Let's go get those chests I was ignoring, and, uh... Fire in the hole! I'm going to be so pissed if I try to go down there and it's uh, an invisible wall. Ah, what the hell. This isn't exactly what I expected to find here, but I'll take it. Thank you. Those statues sure look different before you break the box. Why would you put that there? There isn't even anything behind it. Also, I do like the face I have only just now noticed. Oh, yes, of course, the last one. Did I just see a fish hop out of that? Freaking three-eyed fish. That's what that's gonna be. Like Blinky from The Simpsons. I was looking at? No, 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 no. It's just funny because that's what the room is. Hello again. Right, got it there. Not just an attack.
Oh, right, yeah, up there. Uh, there, that's right. Oop, timer. Delicious! Achievement unlocked, gems in the rough. Collect 500 gems in Metalhead. Huh. Let's not fly through that. That sounds like a bad call. So now we have defeated all of, uh... Nasty Norks lieutenants, unless there really are six worlds. It's surely he'll be the boss of uh, Dreamweavers. Nice. Okay. That felt good. I'm Burning Dog Face, and I will see you on the next episode of Let's Play Spyro the Dragon Reignited. Not entirely sure what our next move will be, but we're sure as hell gonna make it. Later.